I'm here in a town called Hamtramck. It's uh, just north of Detroit, and it's famous locally and even internationally for being a, basically a Muslim-majority enclave in the United States. Uh, there's been a massive influx of Arab, particularly Yemeni, uh, immigration to this area. There's also a lot of Bangladeshi Muslims as well, uh, among other Arabs. And, you know, there's uh, been a lot of changes here. There's uh, a massive Muslim influence now, a lot of this, uh, Islamic uh, masjids around. There's even a public call to prayer that can be heard five times a day. And uh, yeah, the fact is you can see hijabs everywhere, burqas, uh, brothers with beards, you know, mashallah, there's Yemeni shops everywhere. And, you know, we always hear all the time about how, oh, Muslim immigration is, is bad, it's evil, it's going to destroy Western society. Well, Muslims, if I'm going to be frank, have basically taken over here in so many words, culturally speaking. Uh, but I've spoken to officials here who say that it's done nothing but enrich this local community. It's made it better. Is it, has it turned into a third world uh, shithole? No, it's a beautiful uh, part of America where there's good food, good atmosphere, and everyone gets along absolutely fine. And I have to say, I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. This Muslim majority enclave. Yes, I'm enjoying it. It's a great place. Um, Hamtramck is very unique. I don't know of any other place, at least in the country, like it. And I suspect probably in the world. Um, it's always been a big melting pot for its whole history. Um, and the dynamics have changed drastically over the years. It's, it's, it's noted for an immigrant city and a rental city. Um, so we, as you can imagine, have a, a big blend of people here and always have. Um, it started, you know, it's historically noted for a Polish city. That's what it was originally, um, followed by everybody else, German, Albanian, Bosnian, um, Serbian, um, Russian, uh, then Bangladeshi, and, and now the latest influx is Yemeni. I think the city itself is in a renaissance. And, you know, I would say the, the general day-to-day -day here is, is, is good. You know, um, people are kind, people care about each other. Um, the, all the individual communities are welcoming to everybody. What's your uh, impression of Islam? My impression? Um, I don't want to delve too deep into religions, but, uh, you know, personally, I, I, I go everywhere. I mean, as a city manager here, I, I mean, quite frequently I'm in mosques or churches, you, you name it. I mean, I, um, I have all kinds of, you know, friends here of, of every religion. And, you know, I, I have zero issue with any of it. So you wouldn't say that Muslims are uh, some kind of threat? No, not at all. Definitely not. Okay, so Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Salaamu Alaikum. Thanks for speaking to me. Uh, yeah, so you you know the area very well. I think you know Hamtramck as well. Uh, it's a Muslim majority city, slap bang in the middle of the United States. Just tell me. Has it been a force for, has it been a positive experiment, cultural experiment? hundred percent. For me, it's been positive because it's the only place in Michigan where I can feel like I'm not an outcast. Um, I'm surrounded by people who look like me, who don't judge me, who talk like me. I think it's the perfect and the best thing that has ever happened to the United States and to Muslims and Arabs. Like we have a community now. Like if we didn't have this city and if we didn't have each other, what would we do? We wouldn't have the strength to be doing half the things that we're doing, fighting against our oppressors while being in the literal belly of the beast, they call it, in the United States, in the most Arab city in the US. You know, we all came together and organized as one unit, as one collective, and we've been doing amazing things. One of the things that uh, like Islamophobes say about Islam in, in a negative way is that, you know, if Islam comes here, women are going to be oppressed. You know, women are the first victims of the spread of Islam in the West. 
uh, as a woman, as a Muslim, could you just respond to that? Is that true? Do you feel oppressed? Hundred percent. I'll res I'll respond to that. So my thought and take on that statement is that I'm not the one that's oppressed. The women in the United States and the Western countries they are the ones who are oppressed because they have to conform to society. Society says that they want them to be half naked, you know, walking around, asking for male attention, getting that validation, and then living off of that. You know what I mean? Like that to me is oppression because for me, hijab and Islam protects me in so many ways. I honestly feel the opposite of oppressed. I feel protected. I feel like my hijab makes it known that I am a Muslim. So no, you don't, you, you, you know, there's just like, there's boundaries that wearing my hijab creates that protects me from men that, you know, may have evil intentions. You can't just go out in this world and be naive and think everyone has good intentions because that's not the case. There's a lot of evil men in this world and by not being an object of sexuality or something to look at or something to pray after, you're not giving them that what they want. And that's the best part. You're, you're free, you're liberated from the Western society that tells you that you have to be half naked to be accepted. You have to look a certain way or else we don't want you. For me, hijab and Islam, like I said, it protects me and it protects my identity because people don't look at me as a sexual object, but instead they look at me for what's inside of my brain, what's inside of my heart and the words that I'm saying. It's, it's me for who I am and not just my body or what I look like. This is Royal Osaima. Osaimi. Osaimi. Honey. Honey. This is the real deal from Thick. Yemen. Yes. Look at that. <laughs> wow. It's a famous Yemeni honey. Yes. Mm. That's so thick. It's stuck on my lip. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is beautiful. That's. It's literally stuck on my lip. I can't <laughs> this is original, man, because some people bring it in its fake stuff, but this is all the real this stuff right here. This is the real deal from Yemen. Yeah. Beautiful. And just look at the colors. What's the difference? Is it just flavor? Different blades, different color, different benefit. That's, yeah, that's what it is mainly because of... Uh, and Yemen, uh, Yemen is famous for honey, honey. Yeah. the best in the world. Coffee as well. That's where it came from, basically. Uh, almond. Food. Almond as well. You grow a lot of good almond. Wow, that's beautiful. I didn't know the that's almonds to a lose, man. Oh. Ah. Zabib. Mm. Zabib, yeah. Some raisin? Yeah, raisins. Yeah. yeah. Allah, Allah, Allah. Look at that. So I told them this is usually eaten like this, but if you guys want me to get you guys plates, mm -hmm. you get plates. Look at that. Ooh. Yeah. I'm so this is Yemeni mensa. Yemeni so made mensa. So spoiled. You look good. Better than traditional mansa? Yeah, because they use the yamad or whatever it's called. So I'm approaching the end of my time here. I've been to Dearborn, uh, areas around Detroit, uh, Hamtamrik, and I have to say I've enjoyed this time immensely. And one of the main reasons for it is the presence of all these Muslims and Arabs. So uh, the fact of the matter is that, you know, we hear all the time about how Islam is a force for bad on the world stage, a force for evil. It's spread by the sword, uh, that if it's allowed to spread, that it will destroy the Western way of life uh, and will destroy everything that's good and wholesome about the West. But to be honest with you, from my time here, I've seen nothing but positivity. But let's just remember, it's not just a cultural thing. Uh, the religion itself literally could heal the many ills of the West. Uh, Brother, tell me exactly uh, what you think about this. Obviously, Islam gets attacked for many, many reasons. Uh, it gets attacked for being, like I said, a force for evil. And uh, people say that it's something to be scared of. But, you know, Islam is a beautiful religion. I've learned about it personally from my own experience. Just tell our dear viewers, what is Islam? 
Um, Islam means to uh, submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to the Creator. Um, so when we submit to the Creator, we follow His laws and rules and what He has, uh, His commands and prohibitions that He has placed on us. Um, so, for example, we are taught to be good to your neighbor, be, be, be kind to your parents, be respectful to your elders. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu said that even taking dirt from the uh, uh, dirt from the road is a is a uh, has good deeds. Will the person doing it will receive good deeds. So I think in any society um, or in any government, they should they should uh, they should try to bring more Muslims to help the society. Um, I think we're a perfect example of how people should be. Um, we don't go to we don't drink alcohol. We don't. We don't, you know, do crimes or anything like that. And uh, I think in any in any society, uh, the more Muslims, the better. Yeah, that's facts, man. I mean, the fact is that there's a reason why so many people are embracing Islam, right? Yep. There's a reason. Uh, and one of the things that I've found is that it's women who are embracing Islam. I don't know if that's uh, happening here. I haven't had the chance to investigate, but... One of the brothers who picked me up, uh, I, I ordered an Uber just to get from one place to another. The guy was a Mexican brother. Mm -hmm. And literally, like, uh, within the space of two minutes, he figured out I was a Muslim. And he said, Salaamu Alaikum. I'm also a Muslim. I embraced Islam after hanging out with Muslims. And uh, he said it was the best decision he ever made. And this is someone who comes from a cultured background, a religious background. But he said once he was exposed to Islam and he learned what it was really all about, past the negative headlines, past the stereotypes, past the lies and misinformation, he said it has nothing but positive impact on his life. And uh, that's just one of many, many stories. It's happening in UK. It's happening in Europe. Just tell me, I don't know from experience, is there a lot of converts here? Are there a lot of conversions happening? Do you know? Oh, uh, yes. Um, we always see at the at the mosques that this this brother just became Muslim or this brother you know, just reverted to Islam. Um, so I think it's, يعني Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ عَرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِشَةً ضَنْكَ Whoever stays away from my remembrance, they'll, they'll have a rough and uh, rough life and they'll never find that inner peace that people look for. So person following his desires and chasing money or women or, or you know, alcohol or any of these types of, um, any of these types of vices, they eventually find find that the that no matter how many times they indulge in these things that it never satisfies them internally and uh, only through the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing Islam and the brotherhood of Islam and how Muslims treat each other and how Muslims treat non-Muslims and and uh finding that peace to knowing that you know your purpose in life you know why you're here and you're and you're going on that journey to fulfill your your um your purpose and your obligation towards your creator because we're every human being is a slave to something um you're either a slave to your desires you're a slave to your job you're a slave to your you know your idols who you find you know who you follow the most or you're a slave to social media but when you're a slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it it satisfies you internally so we look at Islam as not only does this does its aqidah or its doctrine satisfy the mind, but it also fills the heart with tranquility. Um, and I think that that could only be found in Islam. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, th there's going to be people watching this who are non-Muslim. There are many, many reasons that you should investigate Islam. There's a lot there that it can offer. And like I said, I mean, it's it it it, it combats all of the problems that are essentially destroying the Western way of life. In reality, you know, all of these uh, modern day secular ideologies uh, which are attacking the family unit, they depopulate, there's a depopulation issue in the West. Uh, you know, the, all of these issues, Islam can combat it. But what I want to ask you as well is a message to Muslims because one thing I've noticed since coming here to the States, surprisingly, uh, at least in the area of Dearborn, there seems to be a, a good amount of pride and uh, a, a kind of unapologetic attitude to to islam here which you actually don't find in the uk there's a lot of muslims who want to conform to the and and back down under pressure from non-muslims so for example they want to 
uh, water down their language. They want to uh, uh, misrepresent Islam to make it soft and uh, fluffy and appeal. You know, they want to they want to uh, find common ground. They don't want to educate about Islam. They want to water down the controversial aspects, you know, and be soft and misrepresent what Islam really thinks in certain areas. But here, like, for example, I've seen in Hamtamrik, they have a Muslim majority council, a Muslim mayor. They've removed uh, LGBT uh, propaganda from government buildings, you know, something which British politicians that are Muslim would be too scared to do. I know from experience. So they're unapologetic. They've pushed their thing, but they've done it because they believe it's the right thing to do for a number of reasons. So what do you want to say to Muslims watching this who perhaps are a little bit scared of their beliefs? They don't want to publicize it. They're nervous. They want to water it down to, to please people who are hearing who are non-Muslim. You know, we have to be strong and brave as well. And remember that our way of life, despite what the media says, is we have the, the, the truth, the right message, and our way of life is superior and it's for all people and it can benefit all people as well. Yeah, I totally agree. Um when we look at when we look at non Muslims and and we discuss with them or for instance, we once had a we had some Christians come to a uh, come to the mosque and they were just asking questions and they they assigned somebody to answer their questions. And when they were, they did, they were kind of compromising, and it led to it led to disagreement and led to arguing. Um, so then, me and me and a brother once then intervened and said, "Okay, this is what Islam says." So once we put down exactly what is what, what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed and did not compromise in that, they respected it more. So they seen that this 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 man believes in in in, in a doctrine, has values that he follows. And he's not willing to compromise, and there's a lot of respect in that, and they respect it. When you try to play the play into their into their beliefs or into their system and try to compromise your own deen, it's it shows and it looks fake. But when you stand firm on your on Islam and what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said to us, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once said, "Shayyabatni Hud wa Akhwatha," that Hud and its sisters, Surah Hud and its sisters, made him go gray. Um, so. Be, and it was because mainly because of the ayah fastaqim bima kama umurt be steadfast as if uh, f, uh, um, be steadfast on what you were commanded so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam being steadfast and um abiding by the laws and the rules that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him made him become the leader of of the community in in Medina the leader of of the Islamic nation in Medina and then spread Islam and and implementing islam till 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 you know he passed um so the the when we hold on to our deen we ob observe the is islam as it is because it is from the creator and it goes against against the whims and the desires that most people see that are fake this is when people come to islam because they it's an alternative it's something different than their way of life it's something different than they, what they've been living but if you show if you're showing Islam as if it's the same as anybody any other way of life or any other any other doctrine or any other creed then what's what's so special about it then it's nothing that 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 will urge people to to follow that religion so i think holding on to your deen being steadfast being that that shining light that people can can go to in their times of need or in their times of of questioning their way of life they could see that these people who 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 lived a life according to Islam have a different mentality. They have a different lifestyle. Their their family structure is more is more stronger, and their the way they treat their mothers and fathers, the way the children treat treat their treat their parents, and the way they treat each other is different than our than the way we treat our uh, the you know the non-Muslims treat theirs, or or it's contradictory to to their to their way of life as well. So I think holding on to your deen, being steadfast, giving, being, becoming that example, like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, is the the best and the and the way to go to not only prove your doctrine in this life, but also uh, please Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in the hereafter. <laughs>